how important is WonderCon 2005? You're looking at the one and only pioneer, producer, inventor, Joel Silver. Joel Silver. How do you feel? I feel great. I'm great. I, I've never been to WonderCon before, so I'm excited. Um, you, you mentioned WonderCon. Before I go and talk about House of Wax, I want to quickly squeeze this in. How important is it for you to attend con conventions like this and reach out to the hardcore audience that this genre has? I never, I never really have before. Um, I've sent my cast to some of these uh, events before, but uh, it made sense this one for me to come up and Alicia come up because we were you know, both available and we were both in town, so we decided to come up and do this. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's, it's new for me. It's a new ex experience for me. And uh, I was out there a little while ago. I was listening to Joss Whedon talk, and it was just very exciting to see everybody there and responding to him, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's talk about the cast a little bit. Uh, tell us, I know Alicia's in the film. Tell us about some of the other people and also how important Alicia was to the project. Well, Alicia was very important. I mean, the, the, the movie is rooted in, in that girl. I and mean, a lot of these movies are kind of driven by female protagonists. I mean, most of our pictures have been. I mean, the last one was Halle Berry, uh, Gothica, and before that was uh, Ghost Ship with Juliana Margulies. So, I mean, it's always a female protagonist. but. But so when we read the script, we realized we wanted somebody that was really beautiful and, 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 and you know, sexy and also somebody that could really pull off the role. And she was perfect. I mean, she was absolutely perfect. You guys going to do it tonight or what? Stop! What the hell is that? I guess the only way to know who's the best of us, for sure, is to go after the same object. You're being awfully cavalier with a lot of people's lives so you can play out a game gonna regret it. They love you. You're such a rainmaker. You're such a powerful player. Thank you. And you have such a great personality that everybody just loves to be in your films. How how did it feel and when was it really that you knew that you, the sequel was, was up for grabs? Well, for this for the, these movies? Yeah. It wasn't. I, I got a script and I w called uh, Clooney and I called Soderbergh and I sent them the script and they read it and they called me and said let's do this and then we got Pitt involved, and Damon, and Julia, and one thing led to another. But I mean, you've got to have the Hollywood experience and the Hollywood touch to be able to book all these actors at one point, you know, book them for 77 days straight in Europe and get all the locations. I'm reading about all the magic you created behind the scene with your connections. Tell our audience and the young producers how long, how much work, and how much effort and discipline does it require to have such a touch in, in this industry. 47 years. <laughs> Cast from PBC. One, one or two questions. We have viewers in Dubai, in Bahrain, in Qatar that are, you know, the diehard fans of you. You're the god. How does it feel to come out on the red carpet and promote your show, Girl Next Door? Well, it's, it's part of the job. It's part of what you do. But in this particular case, uh, we don't mind because, you know, we really love the show. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah, but, you know, I think all of us feel very good about the show. And, you know, and the girl next door, essentially, let's tell the viewers about it. It's about uh, Hugh Hefner living in the Playboy Mansion, and then there's a lot of pretty girls that are all Playboy bunnies, they're play playmates, and they're all living next door to you, and a lot of cameras. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. It is, it is the first real look inside the Playboy Mansion. Okay, we're here with Robert Stamm, the executive producer of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Tell us about this storm brewing, this phenomena. Tell us about it. The Hitchhikers is, is an astonishing thing. It's been this hugely successful book. It's been a, it started life as a radio series. It's been a TV series. It's been a computer game. It's been a stage play. It's been a towel. It's been all sorts of things. And I think that the, the, the buzz that's building out there of this movie for this summer, I'm, I'm really pleased. I've been involved with the movie for nine years. So it's, it's the sort of the, the, a real labor of love and, and seeing it you know, about to burst onto the scene. We've got, uh, we've got some great actors. We've got some very cool, it's a very cool cast. Um, we've got John Malkovich. We've got Sam Rock. Wool, we've got Zoe de Chanel, we've got the singer, actor, most deaf. Um, for an English audience, they'll know people like uh, Martin Freeman, Tim from The Office, which was that breakout comedy hit, which has been, I know it's been shown over here in the States. The big actor, Stephen Fry, and we've got Bill Nye, we've got Alan Rickman. It's a, it's a, it's a very cool, good group of people.